Note, this episode assumes you've seen the episodes on the existence of God and the truth of Catholicism. Please check the directory in the video description if you haven't watched those yet. Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we're discussing the goodness of God, and to do that we'll first be talking about goodness in general. Last episode we discussed whether all beings are good. Today, what's the real essence of goodness? To figure out what goodness really is, we first need to know a few more things about it, and that means it's deduction time. To start with, when we talk about one pencil being good and another being bad, we mean that one is able to write and the other isn't. However, the meaning of good is clearly not able to write, because there can be a good dog and no dog is able to write. Instead, the goodness of a dog is based on other factors, like how they behave. For this reason, we know that the criteria for goodness depends on the type of thing you're describing. So that's the first thing we can know about good things. They all come in some specific type. We also know that some people, animals, or other creations can be good or bad at many different things, depending on what's being attempted. A person, for example, might be intending to play baseball, but be bad at baseball. However, when they try playing hockey instead, they might be very good at it. So we know that good things also have objectives and goals, which they at least adopt, and approach in a different way than they do the rest of the world. So we know good things have types, both in terms of what they are, and in terms of the type of activity or goal they're used for or are pursuing. Things can also be good by being more like what they naturally are. For example, a good mountain would be large. If a mountain were small, it wouldn't be a good mountain, because it wouldn't have the qualifications of a mountain. The ancient philosophers had specific words for these three different ways of being good. But all of the words they use now have completely different meanings than they once did, and using them today might be too confusing. Maybe it would be easier to just say that all good things are good in the sense that they have a type, an objective, and a proper classification. All of these things point in the same general direction. Good things are well-ordered and clear in their distinctions from other things. When you belong to a certain type of creature, you're different from other creatures belonging to other types. The objective you have is different from the objectives of other things in the world, and when you properly classify yourself, you're going to end up seeing a lot of differences between yourself and other things. In short, in order for anything to be good, things need to be actually different from each other. And God said, Be light made, and light was made. And God saw the light, that it was good, and he divided the light from the darkness. Genesis 1 3 to 4. Isn't it interesting how the first act of God, who is most perfectly good, is to divide two things from each other? Next time, can we divide goodness itself into different categories? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.